Forget about not sleeping until May. I may not sleep at all Thursday and the Friday, but I wouldn't trade it for anything else. College hoops, everything else is just secondary. What's up? Welcome to Stuffed Episode 3. I'm John Rothstein. Our goal today is simple. Be the greatest third installment out of any series in history. That means being better than The Dark Knight Rises. That's a pretty high bar. But last week we had a high bar as well. Our goal was simple seven days ago as well. Be the best sequel out of any series in history. Were we better than The Godfather Part 2? We'll discuss that later in the show. But one thing I know, one thing that cannot be debated... We are just days away right now from the greatest month that we have in society, from the greatest stretch of days that we have on the calendar each and every year. That month is March. With that note, let's check the menu. All right, let's check out the menu for today's show. We're going to give you some of the biggest topics in college basketball in the New York Minute. We'll then do our coach's call with the ultimate climber in college hoops, Penn State's Pat Chambers. We'll then do a little nosh with Marquette's Marcus Howard, the top bucket getter in college basketball. We'll then go west on the Hustlemania hotline with UCLA's Tiger Campbell and wrap things up with some late night snacks and nuggets you can't get anywhere else in the sport. Now, let's check those big headlines in a New York Minute. All right, three of the biggest stories in college basketball right now compressed into a New York Minute. BYU's top three, Yoli Childs, TJ Hawes, and also Jake Toulson are good enough to play anywhere in college basketball. Provo hasn't partied like it did last Saturday night since Jimmer Fredette was at BYU during the 2010-11 season. The Cougars were a trendy pick to go to the Sweet 16 prior to the win last Saturday against Gonzaga. They may be a team right now that's a trendy pick to go even further once the brackets come out. Out on March 15th for the NCAA tournament. Another big takeaway from last weekend, Kansas and Baylor could potentially play two more times this season. Kansas got the win last Saturday in Waco. Baylor won the first game this season at Fog Allen Fieldhouse, but these two teams could still play two more times. Once at the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City and another at the Final Four in Atlanta. Another cool thing to keep in mind here over the next couple weeks, counting down to Selection Sunday, both San Diego State and Dayton, two non-power conference teams, are very much in the mix for number one seeds in the NCAA tournament. San Diego State has been projected on the one line all season long. That hasn't changed, obviously, after their loss to UNLV on Saturday night. And Dayton, if it can win out, could potentially also be a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Stop calling these teams mid-majors. Stop referring to them on a level that they're not deserving to be associated with. Dayton and San Diego State are high major caliber programs in lower level leagues. Dayton went to an Elite Eight in 2014 under Archie Miller. And look, obviously the Atlantic 10 and the Mountain West don't have the bells and the whistles of other power conferences, but it's disrespectful to these two programs, programs that have each been to the second weekend of the NCAA tournament in the last decade to say that they're mid-major teams. I don't know about you, but right now I could use a little nosh. Let's call up my big guy, Mike, down the shore. Big Mike, he is a big guy. He's got Big Mike's Little Red Store. Great sandwiches, great salads. He's going to take care of a meal today. Big Mike, my man, I'll take two of your best sandwiches, a little bit of that salad that I loved last summer, and uh, let's try to make it between 20 and 30. I got you, man. I'm going to put in a little iced tea for you. Iced tea, too. Today is my lucky day. Must be getting close to the March. Seeing 20 to 30. That's Big Mike. I'm starving. And before we have lunch, let's check in with college basketball's ultimate climber, Penn State's Pat Chambers. Time now for our coach's call here on Stuffed. Our next guest has Penn State at 20 and 7 overall, heading into Wednesday night's game against Rutgers and State College. He is the head coach of the Nittany Lions, Pat Chambers. And Pat, legend has it that you are an avid reader. If somebody is a very voracious reader, they've got to have a favorite book. What is it for Pat Chambers? <laughs> Probably Carol Dweck, uh, Growth Mindset. I've gone through that a few times. And uh, Obstacle is the Way is another great one. So those two books I keep on the nightstand for sure. Well, obviously, if you're a voracious reader, then you're very familiar with titles and headlines. If you could pick one title or headline for your team at Penn State this season, what would it be? <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, probably, probably we can get better. 
<laughs> we can get better. There's room for growth and improvement. Well spoken like a true coach, but you have seen obviously the metamorphosis of this program, especially this season. For you, what's been the most rewarding part of the journey? I just think the um, the team, the players, the staff, just really enjoying these guys, the connection, the players that they have. Lamar coming back, Mike staying and committing to getting his degree and, and having one of his best seasons ever. I think loyalty um, and just, again, that, that family atmosphere that we've created here, it's just been such a joy to be around these guys through the good times and even through this little the speed bumps that we're going through right now. Well, you mentioned the speed bumps that you're going through right now. You had two tough losses last week. A lot of people need to be reminded that Penn State hasn't been at full strength. Your second leading scorer, Myron Jones, has been out of the lineup. What is his status moving forward into Wednesday's game against Rutgers? Unfortunately, it's the same. It's day to day. Uh, we want to give him as much time as he needs to be healthy. And I think that's the best thing that we can do for him and for this team moving forward. Pat, you have been in a lot of special conferences during your time as a head coach and an assistant coach. You were in the Big East, and you went to a Final Four at Villanova as the top assistant in a year in which the Big East had three number one seeds in the NCAA tournament. That was 2009. How does the 2009 Big East compare to the 2020 Big Ten? It's, it's absolutely right there. I, I don't know um, if we're going to get the number one seeds that we did then, but as far as night in and night out, if you don't play your best, you're losing. And I don't think we played that bad against Illinois, and I don't think we – now we spotted Indiana 19, but we went up six. So I don't think we played that poorly either. We had some bad stretches. But I think just night in and night out, if, if you're not completely dialed in, mentally because this is a mental grind since it's gone to 20 20 games man it really wears on you mentally and physically so every night if you're not at your best you're going to find the, the short end of the stick well obviously if you're doing all those things in the big 10 every single day then you have to stay present and you told me that in november one of the things that had to be done throughout the season to play your best basketball in March was staying present throughout the duration of the season. Has it been hard to do that knowing that in a couple of weeks you're going to be playing in the NCAA tournament? Yeah, it's really putting our walls up and limiting the noise and distractions on the on the outside. I, I, I've said that for a few weeks now and I'm going to continue to say it. Um, when you do that, you're focused on the team, you're focused on what you can do in that locker room and on the court. And when we start looking at the what if game, we start to play that game what if we win the championship? What if we get a double bye? What if we're a top four seed? What if we go to Albany? What if we go to Cleveland? Guess what? You can't play that game until I think I saw you tweet 19 days until selection starts Sunday. When that Sunday happens, you can play all that game. You, you can do everything you want. You can talk about Spokane and Sacramento. You can do anything you want that day. But right now, stay present. Stay in the moment. I've said this. You can't win the moment unless you're in the moment. Well, staying in the moment requires, obviously, the mental toughness to climb each and every day. And the mantra at Penn State under you has been climb with us. Who taught Pat Chambers how to climb? Well, I, my family, you know, I've had great coaches. Don't get me wrong. Jay Wright, I've learned under. Herb McGee's a Hall of Famer. I've had great, Dan Doherty, Tom, Tom, I've had great coaches. And, and I love them for that and the impact that they made on me. But I'm the youngest of 12 and uh, to have eight older brothers and three sisters and, and, and parents that made you work from, you know, the age of seven or eight, <laughs> I think that that gives you that mantra of keep climbing and you're never going to reach Everest. You're never going to get to the top, but it's that process. It's that journey of, of working that hard to uh, try to get to the top. And I think I learned that from from my great family. Well, you mentioned that you're never going to reach Everest. That's an unbelievable transition because in addition to obviously wanting to go to the NCAA tournament, the Penn State fan base is also craving a one-liner for Penn State basketball on Twitter after every win. So we're going to break a little bit of news right now. After every Penn State win moving forward, we're going to have a Pat Chambers line, and it says, bring on Everest. So we are breaking news here moving forward on Stuffed. So you win against Rutgers, this will hit social media. That, that is crazy. 
We did not set that up. You got to tell everybody out there, we did not set that up. I just said yeah. that. You just said that, and that might mean what everything, everybody thinks it means. Everything is aligning for Penn State in 2020. Well, Pat, you've worked really hard. You've been in a situation where you got your team right now to go to the NCAA tournament for the first time in your tenure, but you've known me a long time, and obviously you know that I'm a big food guy. Food is a big part of this show. If Pat Chambers could have one meal on Selection Sunday, where would it be? What would it be? Wow. Well, you know what? For, for me, uh, it would probably be uh, Del Frisco's in Philadelphia, one of my favorite spots downtown. It's an old bank. The ceilings are as high as you could reach. It's incredible. The decor, the wine is excellent. And I know it's a little bit of a chain. Uh, I don't go to the little uh, Italian markets like you do in, in, in New York there, but I would say Del Frisco's for me in Philly would be a, be a hot spot. Well, Pat, congratulations on all your success this season. Good luck with your prep moving forward for the rest of the Big Ten. Thanks for hanging with us. Thanks, John. You got it. That's Penn State head coach Pat Chambers. This is Stuff. All right, time now for the portion of Stuff, which we call Don't At Me, Bro, where I take your Twitter questions from around the world of college basketball. Let's get it. First one's from Colin Quaid, and it's John. Is everyone going to keep sleeping on the silent assassin and the Badgers? You know, Colin, it's funny you said that. I told somebody yesterday that Wisconsin has been vastly underrated the past couple weeks. With their prowess defensively, I would not want to see this team in the NCAA tournament, one of those power conference teams that could win multiple games in the field. All right, this is from Big Suey. How far do you think Florida State can go in the tournament? They're a Final Four team, in my opinion. You know, Florida State has been in the second weekend of the NCAA tournament the last two seasons. Leonard Hamilton has been at bat for a Final Four appearance before. This could be the year that Florida State breaks through and gets the college basketball's most hollow showcase. What matters is John Rothstein saying that that is more life-altering than a two-week trip to Europe. <laughs> it spreads. Um... Or 10-day trip, whatever he said. 10-day trip to you. There you go. I don't know about that. Did I enjoy myself? <laughs> yes. Was it a good atmosphere? Yes. 10-day trip to Europe. That's a long time, and that can really change your life. You got places in Europe like Barcelona that if you're going there, man, those are life-altering. Look, Richmond's a cool place. I enjoy Richmond good college cool basketball. VCU's got a great program, Havoc defense. But when you have... I've seen us to visit places like Barcelona, um, Paris, you know, the two main spots being Barcelona, Paris, and of course Barcelona. Never been to Paris. Those Never are the Barcelona. ones, the spots that you want to go to. Those can alter your life forever. Have not been to Barcelona, have not been to Paris, haven't been to Europe. We'll go later this summer for the first time, but I have been to home games at VCU, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again. A VCU home game at the Siegel Center, more life altering than a 10 day trip to Europe. Next up, what is the route for Dayton being a one seed? Now, I brought this up earlier in the show. For Dayton to be a number one seed in the NCAA tournament, San Diego State would have to suffer another loss, their second loss, and Dayton would then have to win out. The big game to keep in mind for Dayton's schedule, March 4th, a road game at Rhode Island, who is currently a bubble team. Our next question is from Colby Peller, and it's John. Greatest sequels in history, Godfather Part 2, Stuff with John Rothstein, Episode 2, Goal Achieved. That is a satisfied watcher. We appreciate you, Colby. Here's from Nico Del Frate, and it's John. Are you ready to buy stock in Houston as a team? What do you think their ceiling is in the NCAA tournament? It's funny you bring that up. How about this for a nugget? And we're going to get to more nuggets and snacks later in the show. In Houston's four losses in American Conference play, those defeats have come by a combined six points. This team will be underseeded in the NCAA tournament. Palestra Back said, will you address Miles Powell's shooting slump and why it means he's not Big East Player of the Year? I would have a hard time seeing somebody else be Big East Player of the Year over Miles Powell right now. That could change, though, between now and the end of the season. But Miles Powell, along with Marcus Howard, right now on my list of first team All-Americans. It's from Tommy Bennett. John, what AAC team do you think is most likely to make a deep run in March? If you're ever in Cleveland, I suggest Johnny's Little Bar for a burger second to none. Noted on the Cleveland recommendation, as far as an American Conference team to go deep into the NCAA tournament, I'm going with Houston. I love finding teams, like I was talking about earlier with Wisconsin, that could be 7, 8, 9, 10 seeds that could pick off a top seed in the round of 32. Houston, along with Wisconsin, two of those teams. 
Wisdom says, which Big Ten school do you think is the longest run in the NCAA tournament? Maryland. There is no better chance for Maryland to get to a Final Four under Mark Turgeon than this season. Maryland went to a Final Four, won a national championship 18 years ago in Atlanta in 2002. It has a chance to get back there 18 years later. Hey, John, Jacob Kaplan out of uh, Arlington, Virginia. Arlington, Virginia. I had a quick question for you. What is your first one-liner of all time throughout your whole Twitter career? Dan Hurley, the carpenter. Let's lock in. We sleep in May. We sleep in May. Another loyal fan and loyal watcher of stuff. The first ever one-liner I had was in regards to Wisconsin. Death taxes Bo Ryan. Look at this. Nothing like a nice lunch on a rainy day. Thank you, my man. This means one thing. This is dine time. It's now time for Dine Time, and our guest is the top scorer in college basketball. He plays for Marquette. His name is Marcus Howard. And Marcus, you are a good fit right now for this segment because food is a very big topic on this show, and we have learned that you love to cook. What is your favorite thing to make in the kitchen? Uh, I do love to cook. I have to say uh, my favorite thing to cook is either uh, my chicken parm or um, – I like to make, you know, like pork chops, different variations of pork chops. So right. that's something I kind of picked up uh, recently. So those are my two, I'd have to say. All right. So you're more than just a scorer. But legend also has it that Marcus Howard is pretty good at impersonations. Give us your best one right now of your head coach, Steve Wojciechowski. Oh. <laughs> that, that's on the spot. Scott didn't tell me we were going to do that. Um, I'm trying to think of my best impersonation. So of Woj? Yeah, give us one of Wojo. Uh, his favorite thing to say when we're watching film is it's not a criticism, it's fact. So I have to, I have to channel my inner Rojo. Um, Take your time. All right, let me think. Yeah, I got, I got. <laughs> uh, so he'll usually always walk in, kind of straight faced, say what's up to us. He's like, oh, what's up, guys? So he'll be like, guys, I'm telling you, it's not a criticism, it's just facts. <laughs> That's, like, that's, his, that's his favorite thing to say when we're watching film. Um, but, I mean, there's so, there are a lot of things I could say, but that's probably, my, that's probably the go-to when it comes to Rojo. Well, we can't probably expect you to be getting a lot of criticism with the career that you've had. You've been an unbelievable scorer throughout your career at Marquette. Why has scoring the basketball always been something that's come easily for Marcus Howard? Um, you know, it's been something that I've done since I was a little kid. You know, ever since playing when I was younger, um, always playing at a higher age age group, um, never really playing my own age. Um, it really, it really challenged me a lot from a basketball aspect to where, um, you know, I had to figure it out, you know, I had to adapt. And so um, just working extremely hard with my family, my dad, my brothers on trying to find different ways to be impactful and having to do the scoring. Um, so it was just a knack that I picked up and it's been something that, you know, I've had um, along in my career. Now, as your career has progressed and your production level also progressed we have seen defenses regularly use two and three defenders on every possession against you what has it been like to have that type of attention um you know it's something that i i've seen ever since i was a little kid you know even when i was younger playing aau and you know playing like in middle school stuff like that you know i would see a lot of the same things um double teams triple teams box and ones you know i would see a lot of different defenses from a younger age so i mean it was something i've always been used to i know it can get under a lot of people's skin but um, it's one of those things that, you know, I try to embrace and then just try to try to counteract whenever I have the chance, you know, so if the team's doing one thing to me, you know, I try to figure it out on the fly as the game goes on. So that's been something that, you know, I've dealt with for a long time. And something that you've dealt with recently is an injury which forced you to wear a mask during games. What was it like dealing with that as you were trying to operate as you always do? Um, you know, it's one of those things you kind of just have to go through. Um, Definitely not an ideal situation, but uh, I wanted to be sure I was protecting my face. Uh, my nose uh, had, had been broken, so I wanted to be sure that I was taking this, the necessary steps that the doctors recommended to protect that. Um, but there came a point to where, you know, I, I didn't really like wearing it while I was playing. So um, I wanted to be sure I was playing freely. And if it so happens that I get hit again, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of it when the time comes. But um, I wanted to be sure, you know, I was being as impactful as I can on the basketball court. and. I didn't really want to have any uh, setbacks um, with anything, especially someone with like a mask. So 
Well, setbacks are something that is inevitable in life, and your team a year ago had a great regular season, obviously did not have the finish that you wanted. You lost in the first round of the NCAA tournament to Murray State. How much have you thought back to that game as now you're getting set to return to the field of 68 here in a couple of weeks? Yeah, you know, it's been something that's been in the back of our heads, you know, going into the preseason into this year. Um, but as of now in the season that we're in, you know, we try to focus on controlling the things that we can control and, you know, taking it a day, a day at a time. In the back of our heads, we always think back to last year and how we finished and how we want to make sure that we're changing that going into this year. Um, so, you know, we have to make sure that we're trying to do the things necessary, um, the, the necessary steps to, you know, try and better ourselves um, in the postseason. So um, all we can focus on is the things we control day by day. And, you know, we're going to we're going to take the results each and every day. So um, that's been kind of our focus. And we're going to try and do that, you know, going into the end of the season. You specifically had a tremendous individual accomplishment a couple of weeks ago when you became the Big East all-time leading scorer. As much as you would enjoy those honors, for you personally, how much is the team accomplishments here over the next couple of weeks something that supersedes winning individual accolades like being the Big East all-time leading scorer? No, I mean, that's that's all you come back for. I mean, that's the reason I came back uh, as a senior, you know, to finish out my career here is, you know, to try and win big. And, you know, everything we do as a team, um, first and foremost, uh, needs to result in winning. But I know, like, if we're winning as a team, everything's going to fall into place. But the most important thing is us trying to be the best team we can be and finish just on, on the right note. And, you know, like I said, that's a big reason why I came back is because I wanted to, you know, win big, um, win in March, and of course, you know, just want to win and try to make this uh, program as success successful as I can um, to end my career. Well, you've done that on the court, but you're also doing special things off the court as well. You have been very active on Marquette's campus for student athlete mental health welfare. What prompted you to get involved in that area? Um, you know, it's just some, it's just the way I grew up. You know, um, great credit to my parents and my brothers. You know, in terms of being great influences on me and um, and how to live and you know I'm just truly blessed to have the great influences in my life and then also just here on the campus of Marquette there's so many great people that you know that impact me so you know I just want to try and be um, the biggest blessing I can to others around me so um, in terms of you know just trying to be more than just a basketball player on this campus I give a great credit to the people who have impacted me in my life. Well, that's great stuff, Marcus. It's really, really nice to see that. But lastly, we're going to go back to food because food is a big topic on this show. If you could have one meal, what would it be? Where would it be? Oh, that's easy. Easy, easy. One of the easiest answers you could have. Um, there's this pizza joint in Arizona called Venezia's. It's my favorite place to eat of all time. They have the best chicken wings and best pizza. So that's like my favorite go-to place. Every time I'm home, that's the first place I stop when I get off the plane. So my mom already knows whenever she picks me up from the airport, that's the first place we go. Um, I always get a seat. It's uh, a big, and their slices are huge. It's like, it's like out here in Milwaukee, there's a place called Ian's. Mm -hmm. that has this huge pizza slices, but um, I usually always just get a, a slice of cheese pizza. Um, and then I get um, bone-in, uh, gold medium wings. It's like barbecue. It's like a barbecue and like honey mustard, like mix of sauce. So they're really good. I get them extra crispy and they put like a little extra sauce and I put the sauce on the slice of pizza wow. and then they have their own, they have their own homemade uh, ranch dressing. So that's like my favorite. It's my favorite thing to eat is pizza and wings. All right. Pizza and wings in Arizona. Marcus Howard's go to. Yeah. Well, Marcus, best of luck throughout the rest of the season. Congratulations on a great career, both on and off the court. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. You guys, it's Marquette. It's Marcus Howard. Thanks for dining with us here on Stuff. Ah, oh, now it's time to mange a little bit. Found this place, Big Mike's Little Red Store, last summer down the shore with my fiance. Saw this little red store on the side of the road. She said we had to stop. This sandwich here, it's called My Cousin Vinny. By the looks of it, if Ralph Macchio had this in the movie, he wouldn't have needed Joe Pesci. Mm. That is some good bread. My God, that is good bread. Oh, organic iced tea. Sweet. Literally. It's time now for our portion of stuff where we take some elevator pitches with your slogans. Let's get to it. So I'm at Windy City Wieners, in the city that never sleeps except in May, normal Illinois. There's three guarantees in life. Health, Texas, dyslexia. 
We sleep in May. Interesting, a little bit too extreme. I appreciate the We Sleep in May, May, May tag, but a little bit too extreme for me. Next up. This video is for John Rothstein. John, I know you like coaches who've been doing it at the highest level for a long time. Um, I'm thinking Oklahoma's Lon Kruger. Uh, multiple Sweet 16s with different teams, Final Fours. Everywhere the guy goes, all he does is win. I'm thinking this after an Oklahoma win. Lon Kruger, old reliable. I think that's gold. I have a lot of respect for Lon Kruger, just like I have a lot of respect for this sandwich. It's a little hot, but, you know, we make sacrifices in life. Old reliable isn't enough of a pop for social media. Valiant effort, though, and again, appreciate the support, but we need something that you can really take a bite out of. Time now for our Hustle Mania Hotline. Our next guest was sensational in UCLA's win on Saturday at Colorado. Had 11 assists to go with 15 points and one turnover. He is UCLA starting point guard Tiger Campbell. Tiger, what allowed you and your teammates to have the resolve to come back and win that game on Saturday? Um, just buying in and playing as a team. You know, we're moving the ball well. Uh, we're setting good screens. You know, we're just trying to focus on the little things. And Obviously, in the second half, we had a really good defensive stance when we went on our run. So, uh, and it was just buying into Coach Conner's defense and just playing defense. Well, you mentioned playing defense. We have seen UCLA go from a team that was very poor defensively in November and December to now one of the best in the Pac-12. How do you explain this transformation? Um, you know, obviously having a new coach, it was tough at first. But it's just, you know, the season keeps going along. And every game, we learn something new. We're a lot of young guys on this team, and uh, just seeing the results, seeing a couple wins go down, and now we're just playing with confidence, and it helps us on defense know we can stay in front of people. You mentioned that you obviously have a new coach. What has it been like this season for you and your teammates to play under Mick Cronin? It's been amazing. You know, Coach Cronin is a great guy. We love playing for him. Um, and a big thing is he's always on our backs trying to get us better, and Always just, we just know he cares. And so that makes us want to play harder for him. Well, Mick Cronin, in addition to enjoying big wins, also enjoys a good meal, as does most Americans. For you personally, as food is a big part of the show, if you could have one meal at one place, what would it be? Where would it be? One meal at one place? Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I, I really like this place called Raising Cane's Chicken. Okay. Uh, they got some good chicken out there. It's a chicken spot. Chicken fingers. Uh, I like the sauce they got, too. They got some good bread. So I'll probably get a little meal from there, a little box of chicken fingers and fries. You got it. That's UCLA point guard Tiger Campbell, our guest this week on the Hustle Mania Hotline. Tiger, best of luck with your preparation this week for Arizona State. Thank you. Thank you. Breakfast for dinner. No, a late night snack. This is why I love diners. Got a breakfast sandwich. Got my main Hulkamania lunchbox with a little popcorn. Now we're getting into it. Breakfast sandwich. What do we got here? A little turkey sausage, a little egg whites. Again, this is why diners have such a shelf life in the Northeast. You can get anything you want whenever you want. Egg whites and turkey sausage. Oh, yeah. That's to die for. What do you got in here? Popcorn, my favorite. Late night snacks, you can't get anywhere else. As for college basketball, we've talked a little bit about the recent renaissance at UCLA. The one reason why UCLA has been able to be so competitive in the Pac-12 recently, defense. How about this for a nugget? In UCLA's 17 wins this season, the Bruins are allowing just 59.7 points per game. In their losses, 79.5 points a game. That's something you can definitely take a bite out of. Hmm. Meanwhile, the Big Ten has been the best conference in college basketball all season long. But when you look at what's happening right now at the bottom of the league, I think you're going to see 10 teams winding up in the field of 68 from this conference. Purdue and Minnesota both playing their way out of the NCAA tournament picture. Even if they have big wins this week, it's going to take a lot for those teams to make the bracket on Selection Sunday. They look like they're headed more so for the NIT. Now, finally, sandwich is so good. We've talked a lot about off-the-radar teams 
that could win a couple of games in the NCAA tournament. Why is nobody talking about Kentucky? Kentucky has quietly rallied their team, been in a situation where they've won consecutive games in a row, entering Tuesday night's game against Texas A&M. They've got great guard play with Quickly, Maxi, and Hagens. They've got a dominant rim protector, Nick, Nick Richards. We hear all the time about teams that could go into the NCAA tournament and go to the Final Four. Nobody is talking about Kentucky. Anarchy? No. Just college basketball. Our goal today was simple. Be the best third installment in the history of any series. And that was a tall bar because that means you're competing with the Dark Knight Rises. I don't know if we've achieved our goal, but I know this much. We have eaten better on this show than any third installment of any series in history. And that much you can rely on from now until Selection Sunday. We're inching closer and closer to the best month of the season. Nuggets, snacks, off-the-radar sleepers, mid-majors, teams to watch. You don't need to look at any other shows. This show stuffed, you want us on that wall. You need us on that wall. Just like Colonel Nathan R. Jessup said in Cuba when he was talking to Daniel Caffey, who was played by Tom Cruise, and to me more, Lieutenant Commander Joanne Galloway and A Few Good Men, one of the great films of our time. He eats breakfast away from 300 Cubans who are trained to kill them. So don't think you're going to come here, flash a badge, and make me nervous. Stuff strikes again. And remember, follow me on Twitter, at John Rothstein. Follow me on Instagram, at John.Rothstein. We're just getting going. Our goals were met. We'll see you next week. If you're still listening to this and you want a Pat Chambers t-shirt, use the promo code STUFFED and get 20% off. If you like this episode, give us a thumbs up. Click here to subscribe. Gap, everybody back there, great show. How about Thursday night? You better put the coffee on, but I don't drink coffee. Arizona State, UCLA tipping at 11. Not we sleep in May. We may not sleep until Friday. And here we go.